naked bowling antics, farting on set, and that time John Stamos and Bob Saget slept together in Vegas, the cast of Full House was nothing like their characters on the show. Some fans used to refer to Full House as the Michelle Show, Mary Kate Olsen and Ashley Olsen, the cherub-cheeked twins who shared the role of Michelle Tanner, became so popular with viewers that they built a VHS empire, playing co-leads in dozens of movies in the 90s and aughts. But in a move worthy of Stephanie Tanner's most emphatic, how rude, John Stamos almost killed the Olsen's careers before they got out of the crib. Hey, shut up! In a 2023 appearance on the Good Guys podcast, Stamos recalled how he played the role of the bad guy when the Olsen twins were 11 months old. They'd been shooting a scene that involved Stamos and his co-star, Dave Coulier, spraying Michelle with a sink hose after changing her diaper. This understandably made both Olsens cry uncontrollably. Stamos recalled, I couldn't deal with it, and I said, this is not gonna work, guys, and I screamed it 10 times. I said, get rid of them, I can't work like this. Stamos got his wish, but said of the toddler actors who replaced the Olsens, I'm sure their parents loved them and thought they were attractive, but they weren't attractive. Say it again, Stephanie. How rude. Stamos gave the new twins a chance, but he ultimately relented and asked for the Olsons to be brought back. They later got their revenge by refusing to appear on Fuller House. When Dave Coulier was an 18-year-old aspiring stand-up comic, he saw Bob Saget do a set in Detroit and immediately became a fan. In an interview with People, Coulier recalled, I've got braces on my teeth, and I'm like, hi, Mr. Saget, how are you? You were really funny, sir. And he was like, call me Bob. Saget gave him his phone number and said to ring him up when he inevitably landed in Los Angeles. And Coulier did just that, saying, I ended up sleeping on his couch for two weeks while he went on the road. He didn't know me. He just let me stay in his apartment, and then art imitated life. But when Coulier crashed at Saget's place, we're guessing that Saget didn't gain a creepy woodchuck puppet as another roommate. Say hello to Mr. Woodchuck. Hi, girls. Hello, Mr. Woodchuck. Coulier landed the role of Joey Gladstone before Saget joined the Full House cast. He'd already shot the pilot with actor John Posey playing Danny Tanner when he learned that the role was being recast. When he found out who he'd be doing a screen test with, Coulier recalled, I was like, you gotta be kidding me because I was an usher role of Joey. When Dave Coulier wasn't wearing shirts that looked like the entirety of the 80s vomited on them, you might have seen him rocking a Detroit Red Wings jersey on Full House. He wore one the day the cast filmed the show's opening as a tribute to his favorite hockey team. And his love of hockey helped Candace Cameron Bure find love. In 1994, Coulier invited his Full House castmates to the Rock and the Puck celebrity hockey game. Candace has shared different accounts of what Dave Coulier did next. In 2007, she told Today, But he pulled me over to the side and he said, Hey, I met this really cute Russian hockey player and I want to introduce you. That player, Valerie Val Bure, had been watching Full House while he was learning English. It made sense. There are certain Full House catchphrases that could come in handy when facing off against English-speaking opponents. You're in big trouble, mister! However, in 2014, Candace alternately told HuffPost that she was watching the game when she decided that she wanted to be introduced to Val, saying, I was like, I want to meet that one, the blonde one. Regardless of how the meeting happened, it resulted in Candace and Val getting hitched in 1996. She told HuffPost, Dave Coulier still has a hockey stick that my husband signed for him that says, Thanks for Candace. While Jody Sweeten and the Olsen twins have a strong sisterly bond on Full House, Mary Kate Olsen and Ashley Olsen weren't interested in having an on screen family reunion years later. Speaking to ET about the Olsen's resistance to making a cameo on Fuller House in 2016, Sweeten revealed that it just wasn't happening. I think we've kind of given up. Their participation would have given Sweeten an opportunity to create some much happier post Full House memories with her former co stars than those she shares in her memoir, Unsweetened. In one passage, Sweeten recounts a wild night she spent catching up with her Full House castmates over dinner and drinks. Afterward, they headed to John Stamos' house to keep the party going. Sweeten writes, Ashley and I got really, really drunk. She eventually got sick and John stepped up and took care of her. At some point, we all passed out in John's bed. It was totally platonic. Nothing weird happened. When Bob Saget returned in the morning, Sweeten recalls him exclaiming, This is like the Full House episode from hell! Sweeten also shares a heartbreaking experience she had when she saw Mary-Kate Olsen at a restaurant opening and tried to speak with her, writing, She completely ignored me. Then afterward at the Roosevelt, I saw her again. I started walking toward her and she walked away. 
We're guessing Sweeten was too hurt to shout, how rude, at her. Uncle Jesse and Aunt Becky were couple goals on Full House, and according to John Stamos, he was also interested in Lori Loughlin as an off-screen love interest. But apparently, Stamos' sex appeal and his oil slick hair weren't enough to make Lachlan feel the same way. Have mercy. During a 2013 HuffPost Live interview, Stamos revealed that he and Lachlan went on a single date before their Full House days. It was during their late teens and they went to Disneyland. Stamos reflected, No disrespect to her family and her husband now, I would say that she could be the one that got away. When Fox News spoke to Lachlan about Stamos' comments three years later, she couldn't help but laugh about it. I don't know, it was very flattering. I, I'm going to put that on my, my tombstone, the one that got away. But Lachlan has also suggested that her Disneyland date with Stamos wasn't as romantic as he remembers it to be, and she has confronted him over what he says to the press about it. While the Uncle Jesse, Aunt Becky stands out there will probably never get the real-life love connection that they daydream about, at least they can console themselves by watching Stamos sing forever for the umpteenth time. While Full House was a family-friendly show, the off-screen antics of its trio of adult male stars weren't always G-rated. The actors weren't always the best influences on each other, as Dave Coulier confessed to HuffPost. He, John Stamos, and Bob Saget were filming a taxing scene on the show's backyard set when one of them came up with an idea meant to lighten the mood. Coulier confessed, We all pulled our pants down, just to make the crew laugh. Their plan worked, but the actors forgot that their young castmates could also see what they were doing. Coulier went on to explain, Everybody had monitors in their dressing rooms. Oops. He, Stamos, and Saget soon got a dressing down from some unhappy mothers. And it wasn't the first time. Full House creator Jeff Franklin regularly fielded complaints from the moms of the show's child actors, and for good reason. In an interview with Esquire, Saget ratted out Coulier for his habit of removing his pants, revealing that Dave liked to use nudity to get laughs, saying, I had a birthday party in Vegas with Stamos and six buddies. We're in the bowling suite at the Palms, and Dave Coulier took off his clothes and sat on the bowling alley, naked. That's not all that happened, but the rest of Coulier's memorable birthday performance in The Buff is too NSFW to describe. On Full House, DJ Tanner and Steve Hale were high school sweethearts whose prom night episode was must-see TV. Steve, never seen you like this before. Yeah, there's no food in your mouth. There was even a Jesse and the Rippers performance. And in another case of art imitating life, Candace Cameron Bure and the actor who played her on-screen love interest, Scott Wanger, also went to her senior prom together. In 2016, Bure used their prom pic to promote season two of Fuller House on Instagram. And in an interview with Pop Sugar, she threw a little shade at the black, off-the-shoulder mini dress with plunging neckline and ruffled sleeves that DJ picked out for her TV prom, saying, I wore a much more elegant dress in real life. For the record, it was also black, but it was a trendy slip dress. In a 2019 interview with Too Fab, Bure recounted how Wanger gave her another reason to dress up when he invited her to the star-studded 1992 premiere of the Disney animated movie Aladdin at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. Wanger was one of the guests of honor as he voiced the role of Aladdin. Bure recalled, I remember kind of thinking like, Scott and I are just friends, and he invited me to the pr premiere, but is this a date? Wanger admitted that he didn't realize what a big deal the premiere was going to be, but clarified, Well, I guess it was kind of a date. In a 2017 interview with BuzzFeed, John Stamos shared an interesting tidbit about Dave Coulier. He married an actor from Full House who had appeared as an older version of Michelle. The actor's name was Jane Modine, and she appeared in the 1990 episode Those Better Not Be The Days. It was like Fuller House set in an alternate universe, where Michelle didn't move to New York to work in the fashion industry and instead refused to leave home. Danny, Jesse, and Joey imagined all three of the grown-up Tanner girls still living with them. And as the grown-up version of Michelle, Modine was still dropping the character's catchphrase. You got it, dude. Before Modine, Coulier had a two-year relationship with rock star Alanis Morissette, but broke up with her before she hit the charts with her blockbuster album Jagged Little Pill. In a 2009 interview with Clifton Merchant Magazine, Modine was asked if Alanis Morissette's 1995 hit You Oughta Know was about Modine and Coulier's relationship. On Jim Norton and Sam Roberts, Coulier said that he thinks he's the Mr. Duplicity Morissette eviscerates in the breakup anthem, which also references one of her ex's other lovers. Modine wasn't sure if the lyric, and would she have your baby, was aimed at her, but said that she's a fan of the song. But the answer to that question is indeed yes. Modine and Coulier welcomed a son named Luke in 1990, the same year they got married. Two years later, the couple divorced. 
Bob Saget and John Stamos didn't always share the close bond that Danny Tanner and Uncle Jesse had on Full House. Speaking to People, Saget confessed, The first four years, John and I didn't get along that well. When they finally became friends, they made up for all that lost time. In his memoir, Dirty Daddy, Saget recounts the time he and Stamos took a trip to Las Vegas together. Saget seriously overindulged while they were watching an Elvis impersonator, and he later paid the price for drinking too much, writing, Stamos literally ended up taking off my shoes, cutting up my room service steak, and feeding me so I wouldn't yak. Stamos also crawled into bed with his pal after he fell asleep, much to Saget's surprise. Saget writes, When I woke up the following day, I realized I had just slept with John Stamos. The Stamos Saget saga might be considered tame in comparison to other Sin City tales, but he spilled a dirty little secret about Stamos and his legendary locks, telling people, He goes through phases where the hair does not get washed. Sometimes it has its own self grease. Dave Coulier piled on, revealing that he started calling Stamos mud after he smacked him during filming and got his fingers stuck in that glossy mane. Hopefully, Saget and Stamos only shared a bed and not a pillowcase. According to Bob Saget, Dave Coulier was frightfully flatulent, and one of his talents was the ability to pass gas whenever he pleased, and he often did so in the presence of his Full House castmates. Saget got specific, saying, The set always smelled like his He wasn't exaggerating. All eight seasons of Full House gag reels show the whole cast leaving the stage abruptly the moment Dave releases the Kraken. Coulier even confessed to letting one rip in the face of one of the Olsen twins when John Stamos caught him in the act, saying, Stamos just looked at me and goes, what's wrong with you? On a 2023 con panel, Coulier went on to recall Stamos' stern warning, musing, and he goes, you know what, you're gonna stunt their growth, and they are tiny. Coulier couldn't recall which twin was on the receiving end of his spontaneous emission, but in a 2004 appearance on The Oprah Winfrey Show, Ashley Olsen revealed that Mary-Kate is almost an inch shorter than she is. So who knows, maybe that's because of Coulier. Bob Saget played the dad who would give his kids a stern talking to if he caught them using any illicit substance. Not that Danny Tanner ever had to worry about his kids doing such a thing. But behind the scenes, Saget was being the pressuring peer all those anti-drug PSAs from the 80s and 90s warned you about. In Dirty Daddy, he admits to convincing John Stamos and Dave Coulier to join him in getting high off nitrous oxide. The younger Full House cast members were shooting a birthday party scene that didn't require the presence of the older stars, and Saget started getting irritable and bored while sitting around waiting to film his own scenes. As he writes, I grabbed Dave and John and we went into the prop room backstage. I swung open the refrigerator and behold, six cans of whipped cream. He was aware that inhaling the nitrous oxide inside the cans, which is known as doing a whip it, can cause serious health issues. But he did it anyway, and as he recalled, Dave and John followed my lead. I guess we got high. Didn't think so though. It was hard to tell because we were in a hurry and whipped cream started squirting everywhere. Saget later told Pitchfork that he felt guilty about the incident. Nitrous oxide, I believe, which can be brain damaging. But we were doing full house, so the damage had been done. In 2004, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen turned 18 years old. It was a date some of the biggest creeps on the internet have been looking forward to for years. Lex and Terry radio show hosts Lex Staley and Terry James even created an infamous internet countdown to the girl's 18th birthday called the Olsen Twin Jailbait Countdown Clock. The Olsons were just 14 when the two men began counting down to the day the twins would be considered legal adults in all 50 states. In Dirty Daddy, Bob Saget reveals that the Olsons knew about the countdown website, writing, As if millions of guys would suddenly have their chance to have their way with the twins. What a smarmy group of douchebags. They're like, dude, those girls are hot. And I'm like, it's my TV daughter, you stay away. Until his tragic death, at least the Olsons had Saget on their side. As late as 2018, he told Us Weekly, I am very close emotionally with Ashley and Mary-Kate. In her memoir, Unsweetened, Jodi Sweeten details her long history of substance use issues and her struggle to get sober. Her harrowing experiences ended up helping John Stamos after his 2015 arrest for a DUI, and he later credited Sweeten for helping him celebrate four years of sobriety. In 2019, Stamos honored Sweeten's advocacy for addiction recovery by presenting her with the Writers and Treatments Experience, Strength and Hope Award. In an interview with Variety, Stamos said, When I finally humbled myself to ask for your help, I realized that the perky little blabbermouth had become the master of wisdom and was right by my side during some of the most difficult days of my life. Thank God, my wife and my new son will only know me as a sober husband and father. 
This is Jody's legacy in my life. So while Bob Saget may be gone and fans no longer have new Fuller House episodes to look forward to, it's nice to know that at least some of the show's cast members still have each other's backs. And who knows, perhaps fans will get another reboot someday. Some members of the cast told today that they'd love to revisit their characters again. Usually when you're still living in your parents' house after 30 years, you'd be considered a bunch of losers. <laughs> but we don't pay rent, so we're winners. Cast member Andrea Barber weighed in, saying, I think Bob would want that. In fact, Saget told Entertainment Weekly in 2016, what we're expecting it to do is to be so beloved by the fans that later there will be a fullest house.